Welcome back. Today I wanted to uh, go over a wiki that was suggested in the comment section by a viewer and uh, after looking it up a bit more online I see there's a bunch of other YouTube channels that actually already covered this case in their own ways so perhaps this one isn't even that special since I'm totally lazy here I'm going to narrate the details that they have on the Wikipedia because this case also occurred in the 1930s I wasn't alive back then so I hope you uh, can forgive me for that I wish I was an old man ready for the grave but I'm not quite there yet anyways this case happened in Japan which is always an interesting location for murder sprees because they tend to be very well unique in their own ways compared to the West another tragic thing about this case is that they turned this whole situation of this murderer into a movie decades later the actor that portrayed him in the early 2000s actually committed suicide so perhaps it was a bad omen for him to play the character but of course let's just assume it has nothing to do with it but hey it is kind of weird if you think about it talking about people portraying a real life serial killer and then ending up killing yourself years later as the actor pretty sad anyways let me go over the details here that they have on the wikis it stated here that it's called the Tsuyama massacre and it was a revenge spree killing that occurred on the 21st of May in 1938 in the rural village of Kamo close to Tsuyama and Okoyama Empire of Japan Empire of Japan sounds really really badass now first a little detail about the background of this guy they stated the following Matsuo Toi was born in Okoyama prefecture to well-off parents uh, his parents died of tuberculosis when he was a baby so he and his sister were brought up by their grandmother he was originally outgoing but at the age of 17 he became socially withdrawn after his sister married in 1934 he was also interested in the story of Sada Aba the prostitute who in May 1936 strangled her lover then severed his genitals he started writing a novel he took part in yobai or night crawling a rural custom which involved creeping into young women's bedrooms during the night to seek sexual intercourse. From his suicide notes, it appears that after May 1937, when he was diagnosed as suffering from tuberculosis, the young women in the village rejected his sexual advances. Now the massacre then occurred not long after. Now this is what it has to say. Matsuo cut the electricity line to the village of Kamo on the evening of the May 20th, which left the community in darkness. At around 1.30 a.m. on the 21st of May, he killed his 76-year-old grandmother by decapitating her with an axe. Then he strapped two flashlights to his head and prowled through the village like a youth engaged in night crawling, entering the homes of his neighbors. He killed 29 neighbors. 27 whom died at the scene of the incident while two others were fatally wounded dying of their injuries later and seriously injured three others in about an hour and a half using a browning shotgun a japanese sword and an axe this was almost half of the residents of the small community at dawn he committed suicide by shooting himself in the chest now he also apparently left some suicide notes and they described the following several long notes were left which revealed that he was concerned about the social impact of his tuberculosis which in the 1930s was an incurable fatal illness he felt that his female neighbors became cold towards him once they knew of this illness and that he was despised as hypersexual and he also stated in the notes that neighbors insulted and treated him badly after he was found to have tuberculosis for revenge he decided to enter their homes and kill them he waited for the time when the women returned to their houses their authorities were concerned and his gun license was revoked. He, however, prepared swords and guns secretly. He regretted that he would not be able to shoot some people he wanted to, as that would have involved killing people he regarded as innocent. He also wrote that he killed his grandmother because he could not bear leaving her alive to face the shame and social stigma that would be associated with being a murderous grandmother. That's very tragic. All of this is just absolutely tragic if you think about it the whole basic idea behind why this occurred because of a freaking illness and then people sort of mocking him and being afraid of him and seeing him as bad in a way you know since we're living in a pandemic world currently this is happening to a certain extent people are afraid of each other yeah there's a virus in this case yes it can be deadly but this person really went crazy 
because of tuberculosis, an incurable fatal illness back in the day. But it's pretty crazy to realize that this guy murdered half of the village he lived in. That's absolutely insane. It's actually, it's, since it's such a short article, it's just bizarre to realize that this, this one case from Japan is just like completely over the top right away again. Here I was sharing some other serial killers who maybe killed two or three people. No, along comes this guy killing 29 neighbors. And it also kind of creeps me out. It shows that living in a rural town, if there is a psychopath in there, it's a dangerous place, man. You don't want to live there, far away from everybody else. Just imagine living up in the mountains and someone is ready to cut your head off with an axe. Jesus Christ, I'm never going to visit any village in the mountains ever again. And as I said at the beginning of the video, there was a movie made in 1983 concerning this case in Japan. And the actor that portrayed this real-life serial killer back in the day, from the past, actually committed suicide himself. 22 years after the film's release. So the real murderer committed suicide by shooting himself in the chest and the actor who portrayed him committed suicide by hanging himself. I just, I find the odds so, so bizarre. Like sometimes it sounds like actors who portray insane people from real life might in a way be affected by that on a psychological level but maybe i'm reading too much into it because after all there could be numerous of reasons why this actor ended up taking his own life but it just uh, it just sounds like an interesting connection there to me anyways with that being said dear viewer have sweet dreams